your destination is on the right. So the original owner of this 53 acre property, Adam Schantz, he gave it the German name Waldruhe, which means forest rest in German. And uh, it's very well named, uh, I will say, for what it is as a park now, uh, because it just simply has all these older trees and everything in it. So welcome back everyone. Today I'm on location here at Waldruhe Park. Um, this is a park that I've been to once uh, about a year ago, um, and I wasn't really here for photography, but now I'm back with the camera. Um, and then, yeah, it's just like a smaller community park. Uh, with some uh, bike trail uh, as I'm actually along right now at least and um, it just winds through uh, all these old trees and everything so it's quite a stunning place especially at golden hour um, at least from what I remember at my first visit um, but today is going to be a very stark contrast to that um, simply because it's just very gray moody skies it's just blank boring flat light um, for what it is nothing really dynamic such as that um, but you know I'm going to be here for the day or at least the morning and um, I'm going to try out some photography here and so I'm traveling really, really light, as you can probably tell. Got pretty much nothing on me, but <laughs> except for uh, just my camera and the wide angle lens. And I'm gonna make a little experiment out of it, creative experiment maybe, and uh, try out uh, just seeing what I photograph handheld even, um, which is something I very seldomly do. So I'm gonna try it out for today and uh, hopefully it goes over well. Um, I can't guarantee it, but you know, I'm gonna hope for the best at least. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go along this bikeway. It's not a really big park, um, like I said, 53 acres, and so I'm gonna see what I can come up with for the day. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've done various um, bike path, uh, both birding and just other kind of nature photography uh, locations before, like uh, Medlar Conservation Area, um, more recently Holes Creek, and um, yeah, just different ones that have, sorry, there's an opening in a fence line, and. In the tree line there but <clears throat> i've done yeah i've done those kind of locations before that are just like this one which I, I knew that going into this location of course um at least for the second visit obviously but um yeah they kind of bring their set forth their own challenges because um most of the time you're more restricted to this paved uh just bike way and um so there's no real rugged terrain for the most part and uh, they're very small locations generally speaking um but you know it's just it's neat to kind of just see the combination i guess of the urban in the more natural uh, setting you know combined as one i guess and um yeah they can still reward you some great photographs um as they have in the past for me so i'm hoping for the best today but um so far i'm not really seeing anything and i think the boring flat light might be contributing a little bit to it um but you know i'm gonna really try to work with the i guess the limitations to get myself and just with the uh the weather conditions as they are now um here for midsummer but you know it's kind of rare to see a cloudy day like this in midsummer um, at least in my opinion at least it's usually just really really sunny at least but i don't know we'll make it work though um, i'm not done yet probably about almost halfway done i think probably but you know i'm just going to keep going here along the path and hopefully we'll see a photograph or maybe on the way back we'll see something so you never know but yeah lots of songbirds uh, mainly robins from what i can hear um, i heard a gray cat bird um, pretty early on once i set foot onto the path and um yeah, I mean, other than that, that's pretty much it for now. So, uh, yeah, I'll get back to you in a little bit. Now, personally for me, I, I believe I said this before, um, behind the camera at least, but, you know, a photograph for me needs a reason to exist. Um, it needs to be something of like a, like a pull, I guess, a draw into taking the photograph itself. And um, so, you know, it's not always going to be the case that I find one at locations. And it really hasn't been, of course, too, as you can probably tell um, if you've been following my journey for this long. But um, I found these common teasel here, so I'm gonna try these out, doing a photograph of them. Um, they're a summer plant. Actually, they stick around most of the year, honestly, but they lie dormant, and they turn much more of like a muddled brown color um, during the winter time and the colder times of the year. And it almost like, looks like it flowers almost. It's like this nice lavender magenta kind of color um, that and a few of them are starting to get on here. Some of the biggest uh, teasel are, but you know, it's a pretty common invasive weed. Uh, type of plant and so but I'm gonna take a photograph of it anyways I'm um, just because it is here and I'd like to get some updated shots with it and might try out something since I only had the wide angle with me I try out some like cluster shots just showing the entire grouping of the entire plant here instead of isolating a single one like I would with like a macro perspective um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it out here 
and uh, we'll see how it turns out, I guess. But I feel like this moment just became a great reminder for me um, to always experiment with working with the, uh, the angles of your subject and trying out things that may be a little bit different or something that you're not quite uh, familiar with or used to, at least. Um, so, like I said, I've been shooting handheld today, at least so far. Um, left the tripod in the car, and um, usually I would use a tripod for basically almost all my photography um, that isn't wildlife, at least. But and I guess in a way that almost restricts your movement a little bit too much. And so, you know, today I'm trying out, like I said, something different and I'm shooting handheld. And I've been finding the results to be actually uh, quite interesting, to say the least, because I could do a tripod with these kind of shots. And like I said, normally I would, but it's, it's actually getting me some different angles of it. So I've been in live view mode and I've been shooting about 125th of a second. I've been taking these sets of images here that are um, a little bit something different where I'm actually below the teasel plant and I'm getting it so it's towering above and it distances itself from the, the greenery in the background and surrounding it and it allows it to have a much more prominent, uh, I guess, place into the image and then shooting vertically also to emphasize, you know, the towering, uh, the height of it, um, even though they aren't really that tall, uh, at least compared to me or something. But, you know, it puts some, it distances himself between that and the gray sky of the background too, uh, which I feel like is really nice. And then of course, focusing directly onto uh, the head of the plant there and so yeah i've been really liking them so far it's been a, it's been a neat interesting little experiment i guess and um i think other than that i've been about iso 640 and uh f 6.3 um so shooting out pretty wide um but you know it, it works out for this situation here and uh, i can still get a nice sharp photograph as a result of it but i'm shooting in this wide angle and shooting up an angle um you know it depends on the situation like if you're photographing a building that's like a tall I don't know, several story building, you're going to get some perspective distortion um, if you're trying to photograph that doing a wide angle, you know, moved up. But, you know, in this case, I only have this little plant to go off of, and that's the only thing that's really prominent in the frame, the vertical frame at least. And so I feel like it works out overall a lot better. Um, and I do have a polarizer filter on there. That's not necessary, but like I said, I do use that, uh, that filter so much, so I might as well keep it on there just to remove any slight reflection and saturate the green color. Um, in the entire image there so yeah I really like that uh, it was a nice little moment there and uh, I feel like the images are going to turn out pretty well and it's going to be something different for my portfolio which I feel like is most important too um, is to get some variety and different you know perspectives and focal lengths and everything else in between there so yeah I'm looking forward to editing those and sharing those with you in the video here um, I'm going to go ahead and make my way back now that I'm at the farthest end of Valderuja and I'm going to see if there's anything else I can photograph uh, for my visit here so I will see you in a bit so I know earlier I was talking about uh, how common teasel has a dormant form in the winter where it turns all brown uh, but I actually found a good patch of them a pretty large size uh, patch of them um, as I was making my way back to um, the first half of Valderuja so yeah, they're, they're out there. Um, it just depends, I guess. Maybe they just, I think they flower and then they just kind of wither away to that, you know, that darker brown color. But um, anyways, I am on this trail and I'm not actually sure where it goes. I don't even remember it the first time I visited this place. Um, so this, this is gonna be something new for me, I guess. Um, but I'm just checking it out for now. And there's a spider on the camera. Jeez. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just along this kind of woodland trail here, and um, honestly, I don't even know where it goes, but I'm just leading it, or following it rather, and seeing where it leads, and um, yeah, I'll see what actually is, becomes of it. I don't know. It's a nice little woodland view over here, because um, like I said, there's lots of old growth trees, and uh, the white oaks are like centuries old at least, which is awesome. But um, yeah, it's a nice little view over here. I just don't know where it leads, but I guess that's half the fun of this. And especially at locations that are newer or new or I'm just not familiar with is just to you know take the paths and see where they lead so you may find you know photograph like that teasel which is just like along the side or at the end of um, the uh, bikeway there and so there's like a little tunnel crevice here so yeah I'll get back to you in a little bit and uh, let's see where this leads here so I'm following these woodland paths and it's, it's a pretty nice scenic location um, at least in this particular spot. Um, it kind of reminds me of like an old land lab at my high school I graduated from or something because I can see out where it gets to some buildings and residential neighborhoods and stuff. 
and there are some apartments over on the other side there uh, the park that you know just border and fence right along it at least but um, for flora I've, I've been noticing so far today uh, there's quite a bit of jewel weed um, also the teasel of course which I mentioned already but um, lots of jewel weed which is pretty common for midsummer or mid to late summer and uh, I think American bellflower and um, I actually did notice a mayapple leaf um, just hanging out it looked like it was starting to kind of wilt away um, it was getting a much more paler kind of uh, brighter green color that I feel like it's just drying up for the season because that's at that point it's like a relic from you know early spring early mid spring at least and so now that we're here in midsummer, it's a little bit different um, but yeah, I'm on this bridge thing I don't know what's going on here but cross along it see I'm just taking there's a couple of paths um, I noticed there's some blue blazes on some of these trees over here um, like here's one for example so I, I don't know what they mean I mean I know it means a trail of course but I guess I just follow along them and see um, where they go I guess but other than that yeah it's nice it's nice and peaceful in here I don't feel like most people probably um, go in here and it's mostly flat elevation like there's very little terrain or you know anything in their way it's just a dirt footpath um, so it's not too particularly difficult of a trail at least and so I uh, yeah maybe look for a potential photograph I'm thinking something with the woodland do a wide-angle landscape of it maybe if I could find a particular spot um, compositionally speaking I would like it enough to you know try that out I guess but plus the shooting handheld it gets it's pretty low light in here because um, it's just a cloudy day and there's lots of shade of course at the midsummer canopy it's all fully leafed out of course by now and so I, I don't know I'm gonna make my way around and uh, see if there's anything else to take a photograph of but that's just an idea that I'm just having at the moment and um, I may or may not act upon them but we will see all right so I was pretty close to exiting this uh, woodland trail that I've been just taking a wander on and um, I actually noticed this uh, indent I don't know what you call it exactly if there's like a scientific name for it but it's like a natural weathering into the it's like carved into the tree at least um, and it always resembles a teardrop to me but I've seen these before at uh, previous community parks and I've actually photographed it too uh, at those same ones and so I'm, I'm gonna try it out here um, there's a blue blaze like someone painted on top uh, above the this uh, indent teardrop thing and so I'm gonna have to crop this out ever so slightly or I could technically clone it out in post-production if I wanted to but I feel like at this point you know I don't want to mess around with editing on the computer that editing that out and at least getting it to look natural with the uh, the tree bark on this um, I think it's like an oak I believe it's an oak though uh, it's a pretty old tree but anyways it's very beautiful and stuff um, and I just like the look of it the surrounding green foliage around it just adds this really like natural look to it like a found object style photograph like um, of course has been like manipulated by me uh, to make it you know look to my vision I guess but I'm just photographing it straight as I see it now so I'm gonna try it out here and um, hope for the best though so it shouldn't be too hard of a photograph um, it won't be anything too spectacular but you know it'd be a nice little supplemental image um, to include here in the video and it just like I said earlier it had to be something that caught my eye so I'm gonna react accordingly and uh, take an image of it so I'm gonna go ahead and do that here um, like I have been doing today handheld mode um, I'm gonna do the polarizer just to you know saturate the greens once again and um, I'm probably gonna experiment with the uh, the image I mean it's not gonna be too uh, small of an aperture I'm probably gonna do something at the wider end like 7.1 and um, since I am deeply in shade here in the woodland, um, especially in this particular spot, it seems like the canopy is really just dark over here, but I'm probably going to increase my ISO slightly, um, and so that way I can keep my shutter um, at least at a good good amount, so that way it's not too slow where it blurs the image if I'm just not, you know, if I'm shaking too much at least. But I'm probably going to be knelt down eye level with this, and uh, so that way you get that perspective and that unique look to it. So anyways, I'm going to take the shot here and um, I will let you know the results here in a moment. All right, so my initial impressions of doing the exposure on that tree were quite wrong, I'll say to say the least. Um, I was at ISO 1000 uh, just because it simply got way too dark and I'd be slowing down my shutter all the way to about like probably less than 10th of a second, which, you know, even for shooting handheld is to be very slow and blurry, of course. And even if I, you know keep real just huddled in I guess and if I'm not down and brace the camera it still would just introduce camera shake 
um, and that's slow of a shutter speed. And so as a result, I had to um, lower my f-stop number, which means widening the aperture. And I was at the maximum for this 24 millimeter uh, pancake lens, which is uh, f2.8. And so I did that, and so it's shot on a really wide end there. Um, it's still very, very underexposed, but it might look kind of cool and moody, um, depending on how I edit it, because it did kind of create this uh, natural vignette um, with the out of focus blur that's surrounding it as I focus straight on um, with the uh, subject placed centrally into the image there. Um, vertical image, of course, too, which seems to be a common theme today, which is nice, because um, most of the time I feel like I always take horizontal images, so get some variety in there at least, which is nice. Um, so yeah, it turned pretty well though overall. Um, so editing is going to be kind of fun thing uh, to try out at least, and uh, just because it has this natural kind of spotlight, like I said, in the vignetting, which um, vignetting in this case would be like considered a limitation of the camera and the lens itself. But um, I feel like in this case it actually might work out. Um, plus with the uh, more blurred out uh, surroundings of the tree there. All right. So anyways, um, I feel like those two sets of images. Those two little photo sessions are pretty good and uh, warrant this place of success and I'm really glad about it. I'm just doing a casual photo walk like I said and um, doing it with uh, shooting in handheld and wide angle which is always something to you know unique and something to try out you know that's different so so with that being said I'm gonna go back to the car and uh, we'll call it quits for the day. All right, thank you so much for watching everyone. This has been Valderuja Park. Until next time, make sure to get out here. Thank you.